Welcome to Climate Change in Rhode Island, part of the online series called Providing Resilience Education for Planning in Rhode Island, or PREP RI. Climate change impacts Rhode Island's economy, infrastructure, public health, and environment. By better understanding climate change and recognizing the connection between human practices and their impacts, we can better protect our communities for current and future generations. As Mayor of Warwick, I am pleased to introduce this module and the experts that you will hear from today. David Valley from the National Weather Service and Janet Friedman from the Coastal Resources Management Council. The PREP RI series is designed to enhance decision-making and resilience to both current and future climate-related impacts, which will benefit the health, safety, and welfare of our communities. This module helps communities better understand climate change and its impacts. By the end of this module, you will be able to describe how climate change works, identify current and projected trends, and explain the impacts to your community and the need to plan for resilience. So why should we care about climate change and its impacts? We live, work, and play in areas that we value historic neighborhoods, productive fishing grounds, favorite beaches and vibrant marshes are just a few of the many areas that we want to protect as the ocean state experiences changes from a warming climate. Now I'm going to hand it off to David. You've heard the term climate change, but have you thought about the mechanism behind it? Simply put, when we burn fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and natural gas for energy, we add rampant amounts of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere far beyond regular levels created by normal life processes. When sunlight passes through the Earth's atmosphere and is transformed into heat, some heat is absorbed by the Earth's surface and some is reflected back to space. However, some of the heat is trapped by carbon dioxide and other gases that act like a blanket around the Earth. This blanket is thickening over time, trapping more and more heat warming our air and oceans. This warming leads to a variety of impacts, which you will hear about during the rest of this module. Observations show that there is a direct correlation between increasing carbon dioxide and rising temperatures. Since 1880, the global annual average temperature has increased by more than 2.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Two thirds of this warming has occurred since 1975. The white line shows atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration rising at a similar rate as the temperature. The graph shows that some years are higher than others, which is the result of different global patterns. However, the trend is clear. Remember, weather changes from day to day. Climate refers to the long-term trends in our weather. Warming ocean and air temperatures have caused a marked loss of sea ice in the Arctic Ocean. Over the past 50 years, this loss of sea ice combined with a warming ocean have resulted in changes to the jet stream, the fast flowing rivers of air that carry our storm systems across the hemisphere. In turn, this affects the behavior of our storm systems. Keeping the heat trapping blanket and the increase in global temperatures in mind, let's consider the impacts in Rhode Island. Rhode Island has experienced a remarkable shift in temperatures over the past century a trend represented by the blue line in this graph. Our annual temperature was around 49 degrees in the 1930s, while today it averages 51 degrees. Perhaps the most striking feature is that the 10 warmest years have all occurred since 1980. The warming trend is also reflected in temperature extremes. Prior to 1970, just eight summers experienced 15 or more days above 90 degrees compared to 15 summers since 1970. Increased temperatures mean longer, hotter summers with increased potential for drought and negative effects on human health. Warmer air temperatures allow the atmosphere to hold more water vapor. Since 1930, annual precipitation has increased by eight inches. This is dramatic. Looking at the graph, notice the number of years since 1970 with annual rainfall of more than 55 inches. Rhode Island is also experiencing more intense precipitation events. We used to average eight days per year of rainfall greater than one inch. 
Today, we are now averaging nearly 15 days per year. More intense downpours and increasing impervious coverage, such as roads and parking lots, have resulted in an increase in flood frequency and, in some locations, like the Patuxent River in Cranston, flood magnitude. While floods were infrequent in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, the basin now often floods multiple times per year. Now I'm going to hand it off to Janet. Climate change has also resulted in coastal change in Rhode Island. Measurements taken at the Newport tide gauge show that sea levels today are more than 10 inches higher than in 1930. Seas are rising due to several factors. Warm waters expand and ice sheets melt, adding water to the ocean. Sea levels can also be affected locally by land sinking, by changes in ocean currents, or even by changes to the gravitational attraction of the large ice sheets. As a result, seas are rising faster in Rhode Island than the global average and will continue to do so in the future. In Rhode Island, we can likely expect one foot of sea level rise by 2025, three feet by 2050, and nine feet by 2100. These projections are defined by NOAA and adopted by the Rhode Island Coastal Resources Management Council. Today's extreme tides give us a preview of our future. Over the next 20 years, many low-lying roads and neighborhoods will experience daily tides equal to today's one-foot moon tide. A two-foot extreme tide gives us a preview of daily tides around mid-century before a new 30-year mortgage is paid off. At that time, we expect more than nine square miles of coastal property to be permanently flooded from rising seas. Shores that currently flood three or four times per year during extreme tides will flood about 70 times um, a year with a one foot sea level rise and over 300 times a year with two feet of sea level rise. Marshes are drowning in place and are moving inland due to rising sea levels. Roads and other coastal development may prevent marshes from migrating upland. Models show that Rhode Island could lose approximately 50% of its salt marshes by mid-century. This loss will reduce ecosystem services, such as supporting nurseries for fish, filtering contaminants, and helping to absorb floodwaters. Storm surge occurs when winds push water towards the shore, causing a rapid rise in water levels. During nor'easters, surges of two feet or more can last through several tidal cycles and cause significant shoreline erosion. Hurricanes can generate much higher surges, 10 feet or more above predicted tide heights. Storm surge can easily move coastal sediment, causing erosion and disruption to the built environment. Waves can even move objects such as houses, septic systems, and seawalls. Storm surge doesn't only impact beaches and beach houses, it also floods communities along the bay. Erosion is expected to accelerate due to higher storm surge, resulting in greater damages to buildings and infrastructure. The effects of storm surge and sea level rise are modeled by an online mapping tool known as Storm Tools. Today, this road in Warwick experiences flooding on extreme high tides. The map on the right shows how two to three feet of surge or future sea level rise will flood the neighborhood. Numerous global models show average temperatures continuing to rise in the future. While their magnitudes differ, all the trends continue upward, along with increases in water temperature, annual precipitation, heavy rain events, sea level rise, and erosion. As you have just heard, climate change impacts all aspects of Rhode Island's well-being. So let's plan accordingly. This brief module described various implications of climate change and illustrated impacts that we are seeing today. Thankfully, Rhode Island's communities are already tackling the impacts of climate change. Municipalities are taking action to mitigate or reduce their carbon footprint with programs to advance the state's renewable energy goals. When it comes to issues like flooding and erosion, Rhode Island's municipalities are on the front line. Some are undertaking vulnerability assessments. Others are relocating or elevating critical infrastructure or restoring floodplains. 
And I'm proud that Warwick has been a leader in using green infrastructure to reduce stormwater impacts to the bay and in increasing the levy around our wastewater treatment facility. Our communities are now required to include climate change and natural hazards in their comprehensive plans. Many are already implementing their strategies that you can learn about in the other PREP RI modules. Thank you for viewing this module. Go to the PREP RI website to see the resources document and the presentation notes. Be sure to get your certificate and view the other modules as well. The PREP RI team acknowledges the support of statewide leaders, experts, and practitioners who helped to make this module a reality. And many thanks to the PREP RI team for pulling all of this together.